across the fence we're at the Green Mountain Audubon Center in Huntington for a special edition of Bird Notes. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The Green Mountain Audubon Center sits on a stunning 255 acres in Huntington protecting wildlife and habitat through education, conservation and stewardship. The Audubon Center has been a community hub of outdoor education for 50 years, making it the oldest operating nature center in the state. Throughout the year, Audubon offers a variety of program and activities to the public. It has five miles of hiking trails that offer opportunities to explore and discover the natural world of Vermont. To find out more, I'm joined by our monthly bird note expert and Audubon Vermont conservation biologist Mark Labar. Thanks so much for having us here. Always great to be on the show and great to have you down here at the Audubon Center. So this is where you come to work every day. This is where I come to work every day and, it, and it's, it's great. You know the Audubon Center uh, as a bird person um, and doing bird conservation uh, is really unique in that it has uh, as you mentioned a, a number of different habitat types that are out there and because of that we are able to see uh, lots of different bird species um, I'll, I'll focus on birds but there's lots of wildlife in general but black burning and warblers up on the hillsides wood thrush up on the hillside you get down around the beaver ponds and we start seeing common yellow throat and gray catbirds over near the house that I live in you know out in the shrubs um, down along the river we'll have kingfishers uh, you know that will move up and down uh, common mergansers and a lot of these habitats are, are very close to each other and adjacent so you literally can move from one habitat to the next so it, it from a bird perspective it's a it's a great uh, place and it's a great place to come to work well, with that introduction and background from Mark, let's meet two other staffers here at Audubon Vermont. Kim Gerton is the center director who has been with Audubon Vermont for 17 years, and Jamie Montague is Audubon's education manager. Jamie is a New Hampshire native and joined Audubon in 2015. Thanks so much for hosting us this afternoon. Thank you so much for Hi. coming. So Mark talked a little bit about the birds at the center. Let's take some time and talk about the programming, the kinds of things you do here. Sure, well, you said at the beginning that the center was established in 1964. So just as a little bit of background for viewers, um, there was a woman named Christine Hires, and as the story goes, in the 40s or 50s, she came up here to Vermont with the intention of buying a fur coat, but instead <laughs> of buying a fur coat, she purchased a farm. And My kind of woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So um, then she took that farm and in 1964 donated the farm to the Green Mountain Audubon Society chapter. And um, that was with the intention and understanding that that farm or um, Audubon Center would be turned into a place where people would come out for education programs. So for 53 years, that's exactly what we've been doing here. We've been offering education programs and doing conservation work in the community. Um, and I think that people in our community have come to love and respect our programs uh, because they are almost entirely outdoors. Um, they're very personal and, and relevant to the program participants. We have an excellent, excellent staff that um, we'll talk more about. Um, they're also based in sound science and lead to some kind of conservation action. So um, especially with our youngest audiences, what we're trying to do is help build a strong set of conservation values um, with those kids that we work with. Can you give me some examples of some of those programs? Uh, sure, some of the programs that we offer, uh, if you were out here in the winter, might be a tricky tracks program for a preschooler um, going out to track wildlife. Uh, in maple sugaring season, we have a whole bunch of sugaring programs. And then if you come out during the summer, you might be out scooping, see kids scooping in the pond to find frogs and other animals that live there. And so what kind of recreational opportunities are there? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so Mark mentioned that we have five miles of hiking trails here. They are free and open to the public from dawn until dusk every day of the year. We are a center that is here to connect people with nature. And so people can come out, hike, walk, picnic. Um, we have the Huntington River here, so people cool off during the summer um, in the river. And then we also have snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. Um, and our trail system is designed so that it is accessible to people of all abilities. Um, if you're an avid hiker, you can hit our ridge line um, at the center, but if you are someone who wants to come out and hike with a toddler, um, you can walk through our sugar bush where the trails are flat and wide, and there's always something to see. Mark mentioned the birds, but um, I was out walking just recently uh, with my dog on a leash. Um, and uh, ran into a black bear on the trails. So there's a little something for everyone. <laughs> so Kim, why don't you introduce us to Audubon's newest employee? 
Oh, newest employee, yes. Um, <laughs> this is uh, Jamie Montague, and she is our um, education program manager, but she is also our day camp director, and she is one of three education staff that we have working um, to develop and deliver our programs at the center and then also in, through outreach. So Jamie, tell us about some of the programming. So Kim already mentioned a couple of them. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was that there's always something different happening here with our programming. We follow the seasons. So at the beginning of the year, we start out in January, a lot of wildlife tracking, um, winter wilderness skills. Then we move into the springtime and we're following bird migrations and amphibians coming out. Um, then in the summertime, pond scooping and hot days at the river, um, you know, wildflower walks for adults. Um, we have bird monitoring that happens once a month here at the center. We move into the fall, learning about trees and beautiful foliage. Um, and then uh, orienteering. We have some great orienteering programs for all ages. So it really follows a seasonal theme. Mm -hmm. And so you talk about some of the educational programs for young folks. What about for adults? Great. So we have um, a wonderful, diverse public program for a series for adults. And it includes a lot of things that people who like to spend outside, time outside or want to spend more time outside would want to know about. Um, birding, wildlife tracking, wilderness skills, orienteering, um, things that you would build in your skill set as you're spending time outside. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's important that you mention outside because that's really what this is all about. It's not about sitting at a table and looking at pictures. Absolutely. Um, one of our newest programs is actually for the youngest age group. It's a free nature play group and we started it just this last year and with that exact goal of helping people, uh, parents and caregivers that have really young children find ways to get comfortable spending time outside no matter what the weather is. And that can be a challenge for people. Um, they get intimidated maybe by the rain or a really cold winter day, but we're trying to show people how to stay warm, how to stay active, things that you can do to explore and investigate. Um, every day has something new to offer. And I think that that's really a foundation of our programming. And so what was the response to that? It's been really overwhelming. We started uh, last May, May of 2016, and um, we have had upwards of 30 to 35 people at our playgroups. Um, it's one of the first free programs we've had in a while at the center, mm -hmm. and it's a goal of ours to start offering more free programming to the public to help them connect with us, um, and it's been great. And so one of the favorite times of year, obviously, is coming up sugaring season, and Audubon is well known for its programs and sugar on snow parties. Yeah, so um, one thing I haven't talked about yet and it connects with our sugaring season is our school program. So we see uh, over 4,000 students ages preschool through high school here at the center every year. And they go to a myriad of programming's and, uh, programs, including sugaring. And um, one thing I really appreciate about our sugaring programs is that they're very investigative. Um, Sometimes uh, we have programs where we have a really clear objective, a learning objective, and then um, it's aligning with maybe school standards. But our sugaring season is really unique because it's very open-ended. It's very inquiry-based. Um, we have kids come and we give them a kit of tools that they may use to tap a tree, but we kind of bring them to this tree and say, we're not going to tell you how to do this. We want you to work together and look at these tools. You may have never seen some of these tools before. You may have never seen somebody tap a tree, but let's see if you guys can figure it out. And it's really fun to see the response from the kids um, <laughs> of bet. all ages, you know, trying to figure out like, does this, you know, oh, you've got the drill backwards, but they don't know it. And, you know, we don't tell them. And they, you know, the other kid's like, oh, I think that might not be the right way. And they try to put the hook on first and the tap later, and they, you know, have to go back and redo it. And it's just, um, one example of that inquiry-based model of learning that we strive for. And you mm -hmm. actually make syrup. We yes, do. we do. We do, and in fact, the uh, maple sugaring program here um, is, is wonderful for children, but we also have our sugar on snow parties that you mentioned, which are free community-wide events that have been happening for more than 40 years. So they've really become an annual tradition for people um, in this area. And what makes our sugar on snow parties unique is uh, folks who come out, the guests who come out, uh, have that full sensorial experience that Jamie was just talking about that the little kids have, where mm -hmm. they are included in the process of maple sugaring when they come to visit. They from can carry this bucket. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, that's exactly it. And people like that. They come out and they learn how to tap a tree and they taste sap if the sap is running and they're asked to gather Help us sap. To collect it. Exactly. Yeah. And they, they do learn how to tap a tree. And then 
um, we have a demonstration sugar house here. So even if the weather's not perfect for actually producing maple syrup in our larger sugar house, people can always come and see the sap boiling, smell the, the syrup as it starts to, um, well, as it's cooking, mm -hmm. and, um, and really get that experience um, from sap all the way to maple syrup. And it's, it's like I said, it's like a rite of spring. And then of course the sugar on snow is there, <laughs> which you know people love that to come in and buy that. And um, proceeds from that go right back into our education programs here at the center. Let's transition into summer now because you have summer camp. We do have yes. summer camps. <laughs> <laughs> so our summer camp season is a blast. Anybody who were to visit the center during the summertime is guaranteed to see at least 30 <laughs> very happy children running around. And dirty too. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> muddy and um, having a blast. We offer eight weeks of summer camps for ages three all the way up through middle school, age 13. We also have a counselor and training program for high school students and it's immersive, it's play-based, it's very exploratory, and above all else, fun. Mm -hmm. um, it just brings a smile to my face <laughs> to think about summer camp. Um, we spend a lot of time at the river because the Huntington River is adjacent to essentially two sides of our property here. Mm -hmm. And so we have lots of different access points. Um, so we spend time cooling off at the river, building boats out of natural materials mm -hmm. to float down. Um, I actually have a picture that I brought to show that <laughs> um, of one of our summer camp students who made their sails and their raft all out of natural materials. And then they have races down the river with their boats. Um, and we spend time scooping at the ponds. We build shelters. Um, the kids kind of build forts throughout the summer where they're um, you know, maybe making like different territories in our sugar bush and mm -hmm. they play games that model um, dynamics in nature. There's this one game called Life and Death in the Forest and it I'm is Bond's favorite. every <laughs> year we send out our surveys to the parents and every year that comes back is my kid won't stop talking about life and death in the forest. <laughs> it's this game where you have three different levels of um, trophic. So like uh, you know, a mouse and then um, a, coyote. a coyote and maybe a, a plant or something. And the dynamics is that they're always trying to chase each other and get each other and join them into their, who, based on who eats who, to get mm -hmm. them into their pack. <laughs> and the kids love it. Um, we, it's really hard to get them to stop playing. Yeah. And since Jamie mentioned those evaluations and feedback from parents, I'm a parent who sends my kids yes. to Audubon camp um, and, they, and they just love it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there a way for people to get involved with the center if they want to? Absolutely. In fact, um, we rely on volunteers to work with us year-round to make sure that the operations here run smoothly. So volunteering, um, depending on the season, uh, could be anything from helping us to tap our sugar bush um, during late winter uh, to helping to gather the sap a little bit later as spring comes on um, to volunteering at one of our special events. Uh, like the sugar on snow parties. Uh, folks who are interested in gardening, we, of, we often have folks come out and help to maintain our wildlife gardens uh, during the summertime. And then um, we have work parties in the spring and in the, in the fall that we invite the community to join in. So what we encourage people to do is if they're interested in getting involved, just give us a call, let us know what your interests are, and uh, we'll try to pair you up with a project that we have going on. You don't have to have any special talents <laughs> no, or experience? No, well, I mean, it depends on the project, but no, not really. No, we can work with you. Another thing I wanted to mention with the volunteering is that we also have a core of really dedicated volunteers that help in our